Okay, welcome to slideshow lesson on descending exercise eight in the flight training manual. And if you haven't reviewed the basics, I highly recommend that you follow the slides in order as they do build on the concepts covered before, mainly on how your airplane reacts when you add or remove power, the concept of attitude plus power equals performance, how you enter and recover from a climb and energy management. So go review those basics if you have not yet. So when you enter or recover from a descent, you lead with power, unlike in a climb where you lead with attitude. So the mnemonic that we use is PAT, and it's power, airspeed, attitude, trim. Quick segue, but this is really important. Get into the habit now of pulling your carb heat out before you bring your power back to a low power setting. An easy way to remind yourself is that when you close the throttle or pull your power back fully, you move the carb heat knob in the same direction, and you do it first. Later, when you open the throttle to get power again, you're gonna be pushing that carb heat knob back in as you push the throttle forward. So they kind of move in the same direction. Okay, so the pattern goes like this. Carb heat on power back or throttle fully closed. Allow airspeed to decrease. Find the appropriate attitude and then trim to relieve pressure. You should then be in a descent at a controlled airspeed, constant heading, altitude will be decreasing and a constant rate on the VSI. Okay, so remember that when you reduce power, the aircraft will nose down and yaw to the right. So to enter a power off descent, you're going to need to pull the carb heat out, close the throttle, maintain directional control with the rudder to counteract the yaw, and as the aircraft noses down, what's actually going to happen is that the nose is going to want to drop more than you want it to. So hold that control column slightly aft and catch the drop and allow the airspeed to decrease. If you don't, then the aircraft is going to nose down too much and your airspeed is actually going to increase significantly and you don't want that. You want to get into the habit of getting into a glide speed on a power off descent right away. Okay, so let's go through this again, but imagine for a second that we're in a 152 flying at a cruising airspeed of 90 knots and you want to enter a power off glide at your best glide speed at 60 knots. So you're going to go carb heat out, power back, catch the nose drop with the control column, airspeed will start to decrease, find the attitude that gives you an airspeed of 60 knots, and then trim to hold that attitude. Congratulations, you've just entered a power off gliding descent, airspeed is constant at 60 knots, heading is constant, altitude is decreasing, and the descent is constant on the VSI. Notice that in this gliding descent, it's your pitch that's really controlling your airspeed. To go faster, pitch down, and to go slower, pitch up. You'll still be descending, but you're just changing your glide profile. Quick safety note on this one, don't go any slower than your best glide speed. Not yet, anyway. We're going to cover this more in Lesson 10. Okay, let's recover from that descent. First, add cruise power carb heat off. You'll likely need to add forward pressure on the control column to check the nose lift and to find your cruise attitude. And once you've found it, then trim to hold that attitude. Your goal should be cruise speed, target, let's say, 90 knots, constant heading, no change in altitude, and VSI is zero. Okay, so a power on descent is really not all that different. You're really just using power to enter a more controlled descent so that you can alter your descent profile by both adding and removing power, but keeping the same airspeed. So in this example here, if you want to descend at, let's say, 70 knots, you can change your rate of descent by adding or removing power expressed here in RPM. One thing you'll hear me say a lot is pitch controls airspeed and power controls descent. While not entirely true, if you want to change your airspeed, I want you to think pitch. And if you're looking to increase or decrease your rate of descent, then you need to think power. Okay, so one last time. So if you want to do a power on descent, and let's say you want to descend at 70 knots. So power, airspeed, attitude, trim. So you go carb heat on, power back to about 1500 RPM, pitch for about 70 knots, and then trim to hold it and now you're in a power off descent. If you need to descend at a faster rate than this, then just remove power. And if you wanna change your airspeed, then control your pitch. When practicing power off descents, it's good practice to target your best glide speed or faster. You'll need to know what your training aircraft's best glide speed is for your private pilot flight test, and you can find this information in your POH. Okay, let's quickly talk about flaps. So the most important thing to remember about flaps is that they steepen your approach. 
Adding fluff will increase lift, but at the cost of more drag. So if you are descending and you add flap, in order to maintain the same descent profile, you're going to need to add more power. Otherwise, you'll find yourself descending much more quickly. Flaps do, however, allow you to fly more slowly as a result of the extra lift. But the cost of that is more drag. Okay, so let's quickly talk about some safety considerations. So up here in Canada on the Cessna, we pretty much get you to put carbide in whenever you're going into a power off descent or any low power setting. But uh, definitely check with your POH with regards to correct carburetor heat settings for when you're flying your aircraft. Also on really cold days, you're really going to need to watch out for uh, engine cooling or shock cooling uh, just because it does get really cold here. And as soon as you bring your power back, then uh, your engine's not producing as much heat. So um, you might need to do some engine clearing, stuff like that, and your instructor will cover that with you in your lesson. And more safety stuff. So I really can't stress enough that uh, looking out for other aircraft while you fly is your job. So whether you're climbing, descending, or turning, always keep your eye out for traffic in your area to make sure that you see and avoid. Also, best glide and approach speeds. These will change from aircraft to aircraft, so always ver verify with your POH for the correct make and model of your aircraft. Congratulations, you made it through another boring slideshow, so just make sure if you do have any questions after this that you bring them with you, write them down if you have to, and ask them before your lesson. Otherwise, have a great day.